episode 21, I think it is 21, 21. <laughs> of the Viking Stories podcast. We celebrated two big milestones last episode, episode 20 and a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for sticking with us through all the tech problems and we hope to uh, record at least another 200,000 episodes of these over the coming years. So stick around. Yay. <laughs> I'm Hannah Lisa. I'm uh, one half of this podcast. Over there is my wonderful friend and dear colleague Claire and together but not alone we're making stories and we're all about sustainability and knitting. So this is a podcast where we share what's currently on our needles, also sort of any interesting things that we've come across or that we've been writing about, and we also talk a little bit about new things that we have in our web shop. And the shop is also about everything that is sustainable and knitting, so th that's where you find our publications, but also all sustainably produced yarns and notions and the like. I'm so glad that you're here. Yeah. And join us for, I don't know, like half an hour, 45 minutes of knitting talk, grab your work in progress, grab a cup of tea or coffee, and just settle in. Yay! Yay. What are we starting with today? I'm like totally blanking. I know <laughs> two out of the three sections, but I don't actually remember the first one. That's how my brain works. Start with Indian Tangled. Right! Because <laughs> <laughs> that's happening. Today, we're recording this the day before it's going out. It's going out tomorrow, and tomorrow is Indie Untangled, so we should tell everyone about that. <laughs> yes! We're so... <laughs> Jeez. Welcome to the world of making stories. This is also an unedited... Well, no, not unedited, because you do quite a lot of editing work on it. But this is us. This is how we are. This is how we work. Uh, we're not Amazon. We're a small business. We're proud of that. In the Untangled. <laughs> we're so, so, so happy that we're exhibiting at In the Untangled this year um, in a few different capacities, actually. So the first one is that we will be a vendor at In the Untangled Everywhere, which is the virtual component of this year's In the Untangled show. Um, I'm pretty sure that there are still tickets available. Um, so maybe we can just pop the link in the down bar yep, below. It's a festival that um, happens uh, for a week and it starts um, tomorrow on Friday, October 15th. There are a lot of other really, really cool vendors and there are also show specials exclusively available to the attendees. Um, ours is a sustainability surprise set where you get a copy of our latest issue number six and 100 grams of sustainable source yarn. So you can choose the color and the weight and then we hope you like what you receive. So that is sort of one portion of how we're present at Indie Untangled. The second one um, is that for the in-person show on Friday, we have two different booths where we will sort of be. <laughs> one is the Indie Untangled booth itself, um, which is where you'll be able to see sample issues of all our magazines. I think this is a really brilliant way of connecting the in-person to the virtual event so that all of the virtual vendors, um, they were invited to send physical samples to the organizers of In the Untangled and at the in-person event there will be one booth where you can look at all of those samples. So on the off chance that you're watching this before In the Untangled actually happens, <laughs> you know, you can... Um, you, you, you can, and you're going, you can see our magazines there. Um, the third and really, really exciting, uh, other exciting sort of way that we're present at Indie Untangled is that we're launching a new collaboration. And maybe you want to talk a little bit about that because you've really done the majority of the work on that and it's come out beautifully. Oh, thank you. Sure. Well, we did a little collaboration with a fantastic yarn company called So Happy Jane. Heather is absolutely lovely and she's going to be at Indian Tangled with her new yarn base, Sustain DK. And we've created a little pattern just in, ooh, and there's a little thread hanging out there. I do apologize. Um, I didn't do the best job at weaving my ends, but um, that's okay. Uh, but we made this little pattern, um, which I really like. This is called the Blanky Hat. Um, I named it Blanky because 
in old Lancashire, which is where I'm from, um, blanky means like a light dusting of snow. And honestly, most of the time in the northwest of England, that's the only snow we ever saw. <laughs> I'm really excited that part of living in Canada now is I get lots of snow because I love it. Um, but yeah, it's a quintessential autumn winter hat and it's really good for beginners. So if you haven't done colour work before or knitting in the round is slightly new to you, this really eases you into it. It's um, it's not super complicated and it's just got a nice single brim with a um, twisted rib right here. It goes into a collar work section which is really intuitive. It's You can just get into nice rhythm with it and then all the collar work happens without any of the decreasing. So you go up into the crown and that's where you decrease for a nice slouchy hat. I went for a shorter version because um, I like I have a lot of hair so I like it to just fit over um, but you can easily adjust the length here to make a much slouchier deeper hat which I know Hannah Lisa would like because she likes her ears covering so if you're like Hannah Lisa and you like a nice deep hat you can totally do that you can just add length after the collar work and um, if you want to finish it off with a pom-pom like I've done you can do it a little nice contrasting I use the contrast color for my pom-pom just because I really like it but you can use whatever color you like and that's blanky and yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out and I love these colors um so I'm now blanking on the colorways that we chose because Heather only just named them but oh this one's terracotta I know that and I think the other one's beechwood but I'll put the link below down to her website because you can, if you're not going to be at Indian Tangled and you would like to get your hands on a kit that Heather's put together for this hat with some different colorways in, she's also selling them on her website. So there's a link below, but you can get the pattern straight from us as well starting today, which will be Friday, um, from our web shop and from Ravelry. So check it out now. And if you want to have a little look at how to make the fluffiest pom-pom in the world, I actually did a reel on our Instagram channel just about this pom-pom. So if you ever struggle with them, I share a little tip in there that involves steaming yeah. them. So check out the reel, see exactly how I get my pom-pom. So fluffy. It's so beautiful. And you absolutely have to go check out that reel. I, Claire told me, I'm just going to do this little reel on like pom pom making and then I saw this this morning I was like oh my god this is fantastic like it's so fun so you definitely have to go watch it yeah, um, and you. I'm I'm really thrilled like I love the design so it's all Claire's design um, and as I said like she's done the majority of the work on this project which um, I'm super thankful for and really really happy about um, before we move on I want to share a little bit about sort of the backstory of that collaboration because I mean this is also the place where we share sort of little behind the scenes and I always think it's I'm always curious you know when there are people collaborating how that how that came about and the collaboration with Heather from So Happy Jane is actually I think a really interesting story um, because Heather with So Happy Jane is maybe not like the typical yarn company that you would see us working with a lot of her bases are super wash yarns she does beautiful colorways mm -hmm. but she's not one of the you know like die hard only rustic all natural yarns um and so i think um you know that is something that for me is really really exciting about this collaboration so sustain decay the base that we use is actually her first non superwash yarn base. It's a what she calls a farm to needle yarn. It's spun by Batten Kill Fibers up in the northeast of the US. Um, and she hand dyes it. And I'm actually really, really, really intrigued um, at sort of like working with indie dyers who are introducing slowly non superwash bases into their lineup because it is a very different way of dyeing than on superwash yarns. It's really, really difficult. Like you really have to know what you're doing. You have to watch the temperature of your work. You have, you know, like it is not just taking your old recipes that worked and just putting them on a non superwash base. Like that's not what it is. It is basically rethinking the way that you dye. 
And so this is a step that I think any business owner would not take lightly. Um, and so I'm, I'm just always really excited when I see indie dyers taking that step into that direction because I know how much work it is and it shows to me that they care a lot about our planet and about, you know, like where their materials come from. And so that's why I was so excited that we got to partner with Heather from So Happy Jane on this. Um, and Heather and I actually got to know each other at the beginning of this year. We're both part of the Craft Industry Alliance, um, which is sort of like a um, trade union slash club slash collective of creative businesses from all over the world. Um, and we both joined their mastermind groups and got into the same mastermind group. And That's then so nice. when we found out that we're all exhibiting at Indie Untangled, um, you know, we thought it would be fun to partner up with something. Oh, so, I love that. That's so nice. Yeah. It just shows you, I find that happens so much, I think, in the knitting community and the fiber community. You do tend to cross paths in in mm. slightly not unusual places but it's always you can have that kindred spirit straight away and it's like let's do a collaboration because people yep. love to collaborate i think that's so nice it's super super nice so yay, yay. Lady is out now super nice yay next up stuff on our needles stuff off our needles there's lots of it do you want to start or do you want me to start I can start. You start. Go so for it. I have, I have a finished object, an almost finished object, and a new work in progress. What? What? <laughs> what? Okay. So let me start with my finished object, which is still damp because I did not block them. And then this morning I remembered I should probably block them before the podcast. My orange socks are done. Oh, they look so good. Oh, that sage colorway is Thank gorgeous. You. Oh, I know. So, um, these are socks that um, are designed by Elena Solier Yanza, a wonderful Spanish designer. And we published them in our most recent issue, issue number six. Uh, they are called orange, um, sort of the French word for lightning, because lightning is what inspired those beautiful texture cups. They are knit top down, so cuff down, something that I had not done in years. And I actually really, really enjoyed it. I kind of found that, you know, you have like little sections to get through. So you have the cuff and then you have the leg and then you do the heel flap and then you do the decreases and then you have a little bit of the foot and then you have the toe. And it was like, you know, I don't know. I like know what one you of mean. those like treasure hunts, you know, you just want to get to the next thing. <laughs> So, so they were super, they were super, super fun to knit. Um, I made mine uh, in a size two on two millimeter needles because I really couldn't get gauge. I'm quite a loose knitter and I think Elena is quite a tight knitter. So I, um, uh, I knit just like, you know, a size that would work with my gauge for my foot circumference. And the yarn, I need to talk a little bit about the yarn, actually to gush about the yarn. It's gorgeous. Because it is gorgeous um it's the yarn that the pattern was originally designed for mominoki yarn fin wool mominoki is a berlin-based indie dye hand dye business um uh, a partnership between chihiro and her partner lasse um and they source really, really, really nice yarns. So this is a hundred percent fin wool yarn spun up with quite quite a high twist, um, as you can see. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, and I, it's a super good sock yarn. Um, it doesn't have any nylon in it. I mean, if you've been following us for a while, you know that we're all about the no plastics. Um, and I think it's still going to hold up really beautifully. It feels like a really good sturdy yarn um and i knit mine in the colorway sage um and it's the most delightful beautiful. light blue green that sold out like i don't know within a week or so because we do actually stock this yarn um when i say stock i mean we have three skeins left i think <laughs> But 
fear not. I am placing a reorder, so if at all possible, we'll get this colorway back alongside some of the other favorite colors. Um, and I really, really, really like them. And I think it's 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 an absolutely for me. It's just a wonderful you know thing to have a pair of socks that are from one of our publications in a yarn that we carry that is also from Berlin where I'm based and it's just it's lovely makes me very happy oh they're really special I love them <laughs> yeah so that is my finished object my almost finished object I set aside a little bit of time this morning because I really 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 wanted to get this not done but to the point where it is now in my little Harriet Wildwood stitches so cute. bag lives my <gasps> bindweed oh, that does not have any yarn attached to it, which means it's almost done. <gasps> are you <gasps> done? Are you just up to blocking it then? No, I still have to. I tell you what. So, so this morning I finished the second sleeve. I think the last time that we recorded, I had maybe finished like half of the second sleeve. Yeah. Um, I have to sew in the hem, so the hem is a folded hem, this is why uh. this looks like weird, floppy, curly <laughs> thing. So see, there's this little pearl ridge here, and so what I, the, what I still have to do is fold this up, um, ooh, this is really hard to show, yeah. and just sew this under um, so that it has a nice, you know, nice weight to it, and the beautiful folded hem. And then weave in the ends. And you know what? I might just start wearing it. I don't even think it needs blocking. Like, like, no, like, it's like gorgeous. just look. Like it's even. So, yeah. If you felt like so, you needed to just like loose it, like relax it in places, you could just like lay it flat and hold. Have you ever done that just with the iron? And just steam yeah, it really with the iron, gently with the and let steam. it cool out. Yeah. Because I've done that before. I, I also actually have like a steam. Of course you do. It's not really a steam brush, but like one of the hand steamers for our yeah. photo shoot. So I might do that. Um, but I really like it. Also just the way that it is. Yeah. Um, that's all that you're going to see from this today. Because I want to do like an in-depth review and yarn stuff. And so when it's really, really done. But it looks gorgeous it's on my list to do so many things are on my list to do um now that i'm in full knitting frenzy mm. that maybe hopefully i'll get to it maybe it can be like a new year project because we're quickly like it, it, hurtling it was... towards the end of the year uh. like, <laughs> i know i like seriously it was one of the most fun projects that i've ever knit like it was just so it was just so 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 enjoyable like really truly enjoyable and i think it's one of those patterns because i know when we first chose it and we saw the sample and i think we were both completely blown away by it but in the back of my mind i was like Ooh, it looks quite a tricky pattern i wonder if people are going to be mm. wanting to tackle it and the amount of people who've knit it so far and i think it's because of that once you start doing it I don't see many people starting it and not finishing it. It's not something that gets frogged. Exactly. Because, yeah. So it just shows us a really nice flow to that pattern, like an enjoyable knitting yeah. experience, which is always nice. And I definitely yeah. want to get one yeah. soon. A yellow one. Yellow. I need a yellow <gasps> Ooh, bindweed. That would be super pretty. I can, yeah. like, merge So bindweed pattern. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Camouflage. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So yeah, so Bindweed actually is from our issue five uh, and it's a design by Xenia Nyon. I think it's also available as an individual pattern. It now, is. But if, if you have issue five, it will be in there. Um, so that was my almost finished object. And um, I have one thing newly cast on that I just quickly wanted to share with you. Um, and um, I don't know if, if any of you saw, but we did like a like a October celebration sort of in the time between our last recording and this this one, which was all about celebrating natural sock yarns. Um, and I got curious about a yarn that we have in the shop that I hadn't knit with, 
after I did an Instagram live with the dyer. So the wonderful Yule from Wool and Twine sat down for half an hour with me and we talked about how to knit socks that last with natural sock yarn. So that's on our Instagram page as well. Um, and in that interview, she mentioned that her sock sets that we actually carry um, are designed so that they almost knit up as self-striping. Um, and I had wanted, like I had actually set aside a sock set for myself. So when I finished the orange socks, I cast them on and they are delightful. Oh, that's so Look cute. Look at this. How cute is this? So, so this is the Blossom um, sock set on her Corydale sock base. It's 100% Corydale, classic fingering weight, high twist yarn. Um, the contrasting color is this sort of like mauve purple. Ooh. But like I really can't get over how good the little stripes are. Yeah, I like, love that. Like just look at this. How like how this is so like I really really like it. Um, so yeah. Um, mm. I don't have that particular colorway here to show you, but I have the two other ones that we have. So we have this one, and I wanted to show you how it looks like in the skein because in the skein it doesn't look as if it's gonna knit up like this. No, it really doesn't. Like, so I was really intrigued when she said that, um, and so I'm gonna cool. make sure to put some pictures of this when it's done on on the website so that people can actually see it. But like, look, like this is how the skein looks like. I would never know? thought like, that would be like a little self striping, because I did wonder either. because I look I love her yarn yeah, I love the colorway she dyes, but I'm always you know me anything with like variegation I'm always a little bit like ooh how's it gonna look. Like I was, I'd be a little not worried, but tentative, I guess, because I always kind of default to a solid or a semi-solid. Um, but I would, I really want to knit with those now. I've seen it; Cause it's such like a nice little subtle stripe. I love it. I know it. It is. It is really just really really well done. Um, and and like I, <laughs> I kind of want to have a pair in every colorway <laughs> that we have now. So I mean. This will then be like stripes of, of the mauvey purple and the natural yeah. and then like with a little bit of this blue gray in, which I think is delightful. Ooh. This is called grapevine. Beautiful. And then we also have we also have lilac. Um, I like that one too. I love the lilac and the yeah. green together. Me too. And you know what? I think in the skein it looks a little bit like ooh, pretty full on with that like lilac -y violet thing. But if you imagine how this translates into these gorgeous little stripes, that's going to be pure spring. So if you're like more in the spring kind of thing, then, you know, this might just be your cup of tea. So yeah, Definitely. Um, that is, that is what is on my needles. How about you? I have all the things on my needles, which at one time I was such a monogamous knitter. I don't know what happened to me. Um, and I have projects in different stages all over the place. So I'm gonna try and narrow it down to, um, unfortunately, I haven't made as much progress on my socks. I've been knitting the vitriol socks um, from issue six, and they've got a little bit ignored over the past two weeks. Because I got That's distracted. Okay. That's what happens. <laughs> I got distracted by a couple of other things and some work knitting, and I was also working on Blanky, um, doing the sample for that. So um, I'm going to show something that kind of jumped on and off my needles over the weekend, um, because it's kind of an FO, and I thought it might be interesting to show people because it's at the blocking stage. Um, <gasps> so. I love this. And once again, I'm terrible. Look, once again, just never weave things in properly. Um, so just in case you thought that the pumpkins and things around were just me trying to make the house look pretty for the thing. Um, no, I love pumpkins. And I was like, it came to me in a burst of inspiration. I was like, I need a pumpkin beret for Halloween and for just the autumn season. Cause you know, life's not absurd enough so here's my pumpkin beret in and this is how i block I it, it so i thought it might be interesting for people to see this is how i block berets when i make them um i throw them over a dinner plate and it works perfectly um 
it feels a little bit weird at first because you've got your wet beret and you, it almost feels like you're overstretching it. Um, but don't be afraid to do it. Once you've got it on there and you've kind of squidged it around so it's nice and even, by the time it dries, it kind of just snaps back into that shape. And don't worry, it'll come off really easily. Um, actually, let's take it off now because you can just ease it over and it pops right off and this is our plate. Um, so this is my pumpkin <gasps> beret. Look at that shape. That's a genius blocking tip. It like, is. I can't take credit for this. It was um, suggested in the pattern that I used, which, um, so this is Sari Nordland's, Nordland's, Nordland. She's not a narwhal. Um, Sari's um, pattern bizbiz, which I've knit before in, where is it? My other berries around somewhere. It's, um, I made like a coral version. Um, and I love the pattern so much that when I thought I want to do a pumpkin beret, I thought let's use Sari's pattern again because it's so nice. You just start with um, the I cord, you knit down and you increase so it's a top down hat. So I used that. I had to adjust it slightly because Sari's patterns knit for fingering or sport. She's got two versions and I used for the first time ever, which is shocking, Let Lopi. I've never used it before, <laughs> which I know it's like, how have I never used it before? Um, I was in the Mariner's Daughter um, a couple of weeks ago, which is one of my all time favorite yarn shops in Lunenburg. Um, so big shout out to them. And I wandered in and I saw Hannah there and she's like, what are you up to today? I was like, I want to make a pumpkin beret and I need a really good orange yarn. So she helped me select this, which is going to be perfect because it's nice and woolly, has like a little bit of structure. It's not going to be too floppy. Um, so yeah, and of course, I can't stop just there. And if you watched the last episode, you know I've been knitting the Harvest Charm set um, by Susan B. Anderson, um, which has pumpkins and leaves and acorns because I'm making a little garland. So I made two of the leaves from there and now all i have to do <gasps> oh my god are you gonna oh no yeah oh, that is good oh that is adorable because you know how good is that i'm actually 12 in my mind so i made myself no, a pumpkin I hat i love this so much i seriously <laughs> think there's not enough playfulness in our in our life and so i i i'm just I'm just so fascinated by this entire idea, but like it, it also, it looks so good. Like if I knew how to wear a beret and if it actually looked good on my head, which it does not, it um, does. I would totally make one. You no. should make, it's just so, do you know what? You can make a beanie version of it though. You could totally do that. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, it's just, and you're absolutely right sometimes. And I think, I myself, I get a little bit bogged down with the day to day and especially if you're doing design work and you want to come at it in a very professional way and it's got to be very structured um, and then the bit of time I've got to do personal knitting and things, sometimes it can get a little bit too serious I think. So when this popped into my brain, I was like, yes, I'm doing that and it was just fun. I just love yeah it was all good i fun. just love the idea with the leaves like i mean it was already good before the leaves <laughs> that the leaves just take it to a whole next level i love it and it's a really good way of you know those are two the harvest charm sets are so much fun sari's um biz, biz pattern such a good pattern and it's so nice if you've got those things never be afraid to kind of mix and match things and to like mm take bits of one pattern throw it into there and just create the thing that you want and just for the pure fun of it really which and it makes me really happy and i get to wear a pumpkin beret so maybe i'll wear that by the time we record next time we're going to be getting up to halloween so i'll go pumpkin yes, themed please. for halloween also i'm really sorry about the light it's just gone <laughs> pitch black outside all of a sudden so it's something i'm really dark i'm really sorry um but yeah i can't control the sun but um i just thought i'd mention that but yeah so that came on and off my needle at the weekend and i knit these last night so i could show you um and i knit a bunch more of these little leaves 
for my um, my garland too. So I've got that coming, which hopefully by next time I'll be able to show you the FO of that. Um, the other thing that I've been working on recently, I was away at my in-laws and I tried to take the time to make a bit of progress on something that you may have seen before, some time ago, here on the podcast. Tilly's utterly sick oh, of it. Tilly. Tilly's like, oh my God, yes. have you not finished this yet? Chris's sweater. I got the body Yay. done. Oh my God, it looks so good. It's really getting Also, there. like, that was a ton of progress. I think the yeah. last time that I saw this, you were just, you had just separated the sleeves and the body, or maybe, I like, a little so. bit further. Well, remember, so, yeah. I knit a lot of it, and then I tried it on him, and yeah. it, it didn't look good. Didn't, it was really no. funky up top, because it was written with women's, traditional women shaping in mind, and... He's got AKA boobs. <laughs> bosoms. Um Chris doesn't have Sorry. Them. No. It's like the ger- the German in me. Like, <laughs> Just say just boobs. Say this. <laughs> it's true. So the problem is I put it onto Chris and I just all I did is I did a larger size um based on his chest, but the ratios are out. He had like this bunching here where he does not have boobs and it looked really weird and he wasn't bothered. But it was really bugging me. So I ripped the entire thing back and I ended up redistributing the stitches here. And um, and I made his body pretty long. I have to get into... Because I know I'm going to crop this when we edit. Um, so now I just have the sleeves to do. Um, and I say just the sleeves. He has really long arms. So I thought... <laughs> I thought it's going to make an appearance today on the podcast. Maybe next year you'll see it again completely finished. Um, but I hope not. I love it. I really hope I get it done for this winter. But yeah. Yeah, I think I think that is also, you know, like a nice project. I don't know what your holiday plans are, you know, but like, you know, when you're like sitting somewhere having coffee or like conversations with people, you know, you can just knit on the sleeve. Exactly. So. It's going to be a good Skype call, um, catching up with people kind of a knit. Yeah. So, and it would be nice to get True. it done. This is the Fern and Feather pattern by um, Knit Love Wool. Um, I knit one already for myself and it's a great pattern. It's top down. There's two neck width options. Um, I did ribbing for Chris. Uh, the original neck is a roll neck, which is what I did on my version. And this is Briggs and Little yarn, which um, the heritage one. So I've knit it at quite a tight gauge because this is a wood sweater. He's going to be going chopping wood and wandering through the trees in this and hammock camping. So I wanted it to be really hard wearing. And the yarn's fantastic. I really like the yarn. Um, it's Briggs and Little for the body, and I use the. Uh, BC Garn Hamilton number one for the contrasting colour, um, but it's going to be really hard wearing. I actually got to visit the Briggs and Little factory while I was in New Brunswick recently Whee! and bought more yarn. Um, of course I did. It was fantastic. They were so friendly um, and I got to pop in and chat with them. Unfortunately, mill tours were happening because COVID numbers in New Brunswick they're on emergency alert again so we had to be very careful and follow procedure and we couldn't go around the factory which was a shame um but totally understandable so hopefully one day i'll get back and see how everything works yeah. but yay so yeah those are the two things i've been working on mainly i have been working on my vitriol socks and i've been doing quite a bit of work on my watershed scarf too but i think i'm gonna save those because i'm getting quite a ways with it and I think I'll show that in the next podcast just because it's definitely growing yeah. and maybe I'll be able to wear it with my beret. So Ooh. Oh, that would be such a Which good would combo. Be fun. I know, I can't wait. So yeah, that is what is on my needles right now. Oh, that is fantastic. Ooh. And I love that you got to wi- to visit the factory yeah. actually. One day I'll be able to hop on a plane again and come visit I know. you and then we can drive up and go together. Oh, it'd be so nice. It would be, yeah. So looking at the time and seeing that we've already like recorded for 35 minutes and we don't like our podcast to be super, super long, 
Um, we're going to, I think, quickly transition to the last segment of the podcast, which is a little sort of shop news, shop update. So as you know, you know, we've started carrying sustainably produced yarns recently. And so, you know, um, like this is also a really, um, like a really good, <laughs> really good opportunity for us to talk about the products that we have, not just because we want you to buy them, which we do, but <laughs> also because we love them so much. This is like the weirdest intro of this segment of all times. This definitely needs work. But there are a few things in the shop that I just wanted to share with you. Some of them are new. Some of them sort of ha have made an appearance before in some way, shape or form. Um, the first one that I want to start with is that this is our very first publication that's not ours that we're carrying in the shop. Mm. Yay! It's the stunning Morid magazine, their autumn and winter edition. Alison Chu, the ha hands and soul behind this, um, has created a stunning modern crochet magazine. Um, and... Can we just talk That's, about how good yeah, this is? Yeah, I want it and I it's don't like, crochet, so. Me too. No, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna make at least one pattern from this book um, slash magazine. Uh, and it is really, really, really nice. There are um, fantastic photos in there. And I had no idea how many different shapes crochet could take. Like, just look at this. Like, this looks almost woven. Like, so nice what i know there's also a an absolutely stunning sweater that i would love to make <gasps> just look at this Ooh. isn't this good? i can't believe that's crochet i know i know like not not knowing a lot no. about crochet i was I was stunned at like the variation. There's also this gorgeous cowl mitten yeah, pairing that looks like knits, but it's crochet. It's really so nice. So if you are a crocheter or if you're wanting to learn, if you're you know looking for a new craft uh, endeavor, maybe consider getting a copy of more. It yeah. it's absolutely wonderful. Um, every you know every copy, every physical copy also comes with a digital version. And they're all up on the website now. That also comes um, with um, an easy read version too. Exactly. So, which was really yeah. interesting because that's something we've been interested in. We've been doing with our own magazines. So it was exciting to see another magazine also doing yeah. easy read versions. And I'm really excited for it because I know a lot of people have asked us in the past if we're going to start accepting crochet um, patterns. Um, so we know that a lot of you are interested in crochet. The problem is... We don't have a lot of knowledge of crochet. Um, neither me or Hannah Lisa crochet a lot, and you need a whole different set of tech editors. And we'd love to do it yeah. at some point, but it's just not physically and financially possible to do it in making stories right now. Which is why I'm really excited that we're stocking more it because obviously people want to see more crochet things, and they're gorgeous. So, so yeah, I'm excited. They for absolutely it. are. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Um. Then I just wanted to quickly share, and I don't actually know, did we share our new sock yarn slash colors in the last podcast? I don't think, I don't we think did. so. No. no. So in the last podcast, we shared just a little update. Everyone who, who, who is watching this, we shared Katie Green's products, which sold out like in three days. I'm not surprised. I think we have like the gorgeous. a couple of stamps left. Uh, but if you were watching the last podcast episode and you wanted to get one of your gorgeous towels or washi tape sets, I can't blame you. Yeah. They're they're stunning. A lot of people felt the same. <laughs> we have a reorder coming our way, so as soon as it's you know it's back in stock, we'll let you know via our newsletter and via Instagram. Um, what is now in the shop are. The wool and twine sock sets that I mentioned earlier. So there are three different um, sets. This is the grapevine, as I said. This is uh, this is lilac, and then the one that I am knitting my socks in is called Blossom. Um, they are hand dyed in Hamburg here in Germany using all botanical dyes. It's a 100% Corydale base. Uh, no nylon, non superwash, super stunning yarn. So if you 
like me, like having a pair of socks on the needles, consider that. And then in terms of sock yarn, um, we have some really exciting additions in a yarn that we've carried before, which is Garth and Orr's Snowdonia sock. Also, an all-natural sock yarn, a blend between Romney and Hebridean, that originally only came in undyed shades, and is now also available in dyed shades. <sighs> so, it's so super funny. I've, I've kind of become friends with Johnny. Johnny and his mom, Sally, were on Garth and Warren. I've kind of become friends with Johnny. Not kind of. I consider <laughs> us friends. Johnny is watching this. I hope he doesn't think it's weird. I hope he also considers me. <laughs> you know that awkward thing? No, anyways. When you've not met anyone in real life. Pro well, you have met him in real life, but you don't. I have. We have met in real yeah, life. Yeah, like but you don't you really. Know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Internet. We haven't had that conversation <laughs> yet. So. <laughs> anyways. Um. Don't worry, I'm still with my partner and we still have our kid, it's all good. Um, but Johnny has, has, has really become a friend. Um, and um, when I saw, so we were texting quite a bit. And when I saw uh, Johnny's Instagram stories from Sweater Weather, a recent festival that they attended in, uh, in the UK, I immediately WhatsApped him. I was like, are those Snowdonia sock colors dyed? If so, how can I get my hands on that? Like, yeah, they're not, we haven't announced it yet. I'm like, I saw that. So, um, and I also, we also kind of added them before they even had them. And I don't even know, I know. if we were allowed I to. I realized that the yeah. other day, but he wasn't mad. It was he fine. wasn't mad about it. So yeah, so we have three, three of their beautiful colorways in stock. Uh, we have Stonecrop, which is Claire's absolute okay. favorite color of all times. <laughs> yeah. um, we have Sundew, this stunning burnt orange. Um, and we have Spruce, this absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous um, marl of a dark green and a gray. Um, and when I say we have them in stock, I mean, uh, we do still have a bit of this. Um, those have been selling very fast alongside the other two shades that we have, the undyed ones. So this is Glaslin, this is Bala. Um, mm. This is completely sold out. I'm not surprised, it's so nice. Um, but these four we still have in honestly pretty seriously <laughs> limited quantities, but I, also reordered them so Yay. yeah they should be coming back because it's an absolutely gorgeous super super stunning stock yarn and everyone needs to knit with it and the second that i'm done with my blossom socks i'm going to be casting something on with the snowdonia sock so yeah yay i love those colors too they're so autumnal they're basically I i'm know. wearing spruce and then the yellow and the orange i feel like yeah it's my complete autumn color palette they <laughs> And they would fit in perfectly with your vignette there. They really would. Chili's very mm. orange as well, so it would fit in with her too. Ooh, She's very yeah. autumnal. On that note, I hope you have a wonderful autumn, if it's autumn where you are. Um, and do consider subscribing to this channel if you like what you see. If you're new, you know, do check out the last episodes I would recommend starting from this one and then going backwards not from the first one because there were a few tech issues so yeah. we've definitely gotten better um yeah give this video a thumbs up um and also do let us know what you have on your needles like I always really really enjoy hearing which patterns people love at the moment and which yarns people are knitting with so Leave a comment down below if you've watched this until the end. Let us know what you currently have on the needle so that we can get some knitting inspiration. Yes, please. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back here in two weeks. And until then, stay safe and warm and happy knitting. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.